Hey everyone, it's Professor Dr. Games.com here, and today I am really excited because we're at a really cool like NASA social media conference on the um, Osiris Rex mission. Yeah, I'm really, really well. I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to shoot two videos today. We're going to shoot yes. kind of this vloggy thing with yeah. both of us. We'll kind of go around and kind of talk about what we're doing today. And then we're going to shoot a more sort of structured video for the new channel that you guys don't know the name of yet. Well, I, oh, seven, so, 17 no. of you do, clearly, <laughs> because you guys have found it and subscribed. So, okay, so we've moved into this big lecture hall here, you can yeah, see behind out. me. And awesome. now she's, got her, she's not her anymore. She's passed out. Yay. So uh, we're going to, I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to start a lecture and do some stuff. You can kind of see, I'll show you the front so you can see they've got projection screens. That's the uh, Osiris Rex spacecraft. So uh, I'm really excited to learn more about the mission. So we'll uh, we'll put something together, and uh, uh, on the other video, probably we'll talk a little bit more about the mission. This is a little bit more about the day and what we're doing here. And so the other video is going to be focused on the Osiris Rex mission and how uh, uh, Newton's first law applies to that, because that's one of the first videos that we did on the new channel. Um, so yeah, we'll tie that stuff together. So we'll watch some of this stuff. We'll see you guys in a second. Okay, so we are now sitting, and we're waiting for the official stuff to start. I'm super nervous, and I'm really excited. Um, we're going to walk around, and we're going to see a lot. And I'm pretty excited just to go and see what um, we can do and what we're going to do, what's going to be in the rooms. I really like the whole mission. I did a bunch of uh, research on it, so I'm really excited to hear more. In between, we'll have our encounter with the asteroid. We'll get there in August of 2000. can uh, make contributions to answer things that we're not smart enough to know right now uh, about these, these sorts of objects. And so I, I often tell people, think about where you will be, what decisions you can make in 2023 when the sample comes. Okay, so um, I just did a video on Newton's first law of motion. And I wanted to know, um, a while ago I talked to Dr. Alan Stern, and he worked on the New Horizons mission. And it really amazed me that most of the New Horizons mission, the spacecraft was dormant. And it was just using inertia to fly. There was no um, motors, no nothing. It was just going. So I wanted to know um, how much of the actual mission is inertia, as well as there was a lot of stress on the New Horizons mission because it was dormant, and then it just turned back on. There was one day where it had to turn back on. Um, do you think it's going to be the same kind of thing, the same kind of stress with like the cameras turning on and stuff like that? So, so we're a little bit different than New Horizons in terms of it took a really long time to get to Pluto. So um, we are the same in terms of how often we fire our different engines and motors. So once we launch and we come off the Centaur, right, we'll be going on inertial until we come back by Earth and then we do another burn, right? We have some correction burns that we have op opportunities to, but really we launch, we come by Earth, we do a burn when we come by Earth. When we get closer to the asteroid, we have to do another burn in order to make sure that we intersect with where the asteroid's going to be. And so that's our second. And then our third is when we leave to come home. Um, and then, um, we, again, we have some small corrections that happen, but the rest of the time, we're inertial. All right, uh, Poochan, you want to talk a little bit about what just happened? Here, I'll come down to your level. I'll play Allie. Yeah. <laughs> so I just got out of a, a really quick like, panel um, where they talked a lot about um, different types of spacecraft, like what's on the spacecraft, the building of the spacecraft, the launch, the rocket that's going to carry the spacecraft into space yep. before it actually goes to Bennu. And yep. It was really cool to um, hear everyone, because everyone's like been working on their e individual things and they're talking about it. And it was really cool to hear all these little aspects that I didn't know before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll put some clips in here of some of this stuff. And there was a Q&A for us. I got to ask a question. Um, the principal investigator spoke, some of the folks from the rocket team, some of the science team, some of the engineering team. It was really cool. Like, I really loved how they, they structured it together. But now, we're going to go see the spacecraft. Yay! So that, I'm really excited about that. So I, let's go check that out. Yeah, I don't know. If, are they, are they going to be able to come? I don't know. Yes, you're, you're coming with us for that part, okay, definitely. Okay, cool. All right, we'll see you there. Okay, so now it starts getting real, right? Yeah. We're going to get one of the overlooks. We get to kind of see what's going on here. Left hand side. Look, get to slide in. Just kind of squeeze in. Go ahead and squeeze in, Pujan. Let's see what we got here. You ready? And just see what they do. There she is, right there. That's Osiris Rex. Which one? It's so cool. Okay, so there's this giant hot air balloon, 
or not uh, helium, helium balloon behind us, and they use it to offset gravity when they're doing the investor or when they're setting up computers. So the spacecraft obviously is designed to work in zero G, and so the arm is heavy enough and it can kind of injure itself almost just by lifting its own weight. And so they want to see that it functions in the way it would in zero gravity. And so they've got this giant it's in here. Even with our fisheye, you may not be able to get that. But the uh, that balloon, they can like, strap it to the arm, and it'll offset the weight and the gravity so that they can have it function and it function as if it would when it was in zero g. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, huh? Well, right behind us, well, what did I'm really you guys study in college in order to get into and this position? I'm just so excited. So, Chris, what, right what do you look for the folks so that work in this clean room? What are your degrees in? Um, to, right to right study to be working yeah. in that clean room and working. Yes. Okay, so we just got to do a really cool Q and A um, with some people in front of Osiris Rex. Right, they were out there. Well, they weren't in front of us. We were in front of Osiris Rex. They were down there. They were more in front of us. Yeah, they were more in front of us. They were in the clean room down on the floor. Yeah, they were down on the floor and we could Q&A and talk with them about their experience working on Osiris Rex and various different things. And it's really, really cool. And they have a penguin in a dinosaur suit with a Twitter account. They have a penguin in a dinosaur suit in a clean room suit. Yes. Unless they could take the dinosaur suit off and put clean suit on. No, they said it was on in there, right? Yeah, he was wearing the dinosaur suit in the clean suit. Anyway, there'll be a link in the doobly to that penguin. Yeah. He, oh, yeah. He's got a Twitter account, so yeah, we'll we'll link to his Twitter account so you can follow that. I'm showing some pictures here. I think you're good there. I think my favorite sign. There's like a sign that says "Do not discuss classified information in this area." I got a picture of that too. I'll put that here. <laughs> put all the signs because the signs are funny. But it's very cool to actually be looking at the spacecraft that's going to launch later this year and go and collect the sample and come back. Like it's ridiculous that we were actually able to to look at that, that spacecraft. And it's just a few days away from being packed up and being sent out to uh, Florida. And I guess it makes sense. Presley was asking about like how do you t ship it all the way out to Florida without damaging it? And they're like, well, it has to be in the nose of a cone, a nose cone of a rocket that launches that puts a lot more stress on it than a flight to Florida. Uh, so once we've got it all, like they have to make it so that it's all compact and like, you know, strapped in when it's ready to take off. I was on a flight to Florida recently. Yeah, and it wasn't horrible, like being in the rocket that took off. So once they get it in that like launch configuration, what they cost it, then it's ready to go. And uh, they can, they can, it can travel when it's in launch configuration. Right, which totally makes sense. But it was next. Yes. Cool. Right. Okay, so we're in mission operations now. I'm super excited. There's um, six, five, 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 five spacecrafts um, that are being operated. Oh, soon to be six, but five spacecrafts being operated in here, and it's so cool. So this is our mission support area. Yeah, she can explain. Way down on the far end there is where the Spitzer Space Telescope is flown from. The center area here is where MRO, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, and Mars Odyssey, uh, that's their control area. Back behind you is Juno, and then around the corner that you can't quite see is where Maven is being flown from. So the first question that everybody always asks is, why are there no people sitting on console? It looks rather boring. Um, this is actually fairly standard for nominal quiescent operations, when we're not doing something significant on the spacecraft. So there are some really cool models of missions that are going on right now that are being controlled in the room as well and as the previous missions, ones. Yeah. yeah. So it's really cool. These really great models right behind me. They're really high quality. The newest one is 3D printed and it's really cool because you can. It's like articulated and you can move it around. It's Osiris Rex too. The 3D yeah. printed one is Osiris yeah. Rex. It's pretty cool. And then they also have some other really high quality ones. So they have model makers that like make these models for them, so they can talk about the ships and stuff. But they're really amazing. We'll take a couple of pictures and show you guys. Yeah. But yeah. Let's just look at the Osiris Rex one. So um, in this Osiris Rex one, you can. Um, move Tagsam. What's Tagsam? Tagsam is like the uh, little arm that goes in and grabs the sample and brings it back. Mm -hmm. But you can like move it around. It's, really cool. it's like a pogo stick. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to. <laughs> right? They describe it as a pogo stick a bunch of little like solar panels too. Yeah. So let's definitely not break anything. Yeah. Hey, Austin. Okay, so there's like a new prototype habitat here behind us that they're working on for like yeah. deep space missions for like over a month or a year. Or really like how do we do a manned mission to Mars? They're starting to look at how we do it. What do you think, Joe? It looks so cool. Um, we almost had time to go in. So it didn't get to go in it, yeah, but what do you so cool. what do you like about it? What's the cool thing? Um, I don't know. It was a fun it's fact. Really cool. um, well, they have a lot of like really cool stuff back there. Um, they, they have like a TV, and, well, that wasn't really talked about that much, but they have like entertainment and sleeping bags, but a cool fact is um, they're used, all astronauts are used to like like bungee, so they like bungee cord themselves to the wall when they sleep, which is really cool. Um, so they feel all swaddled in, yeah. it feels like there's gravity. Um, yeah, they're like, you know, carrying all their water and uh, that's your step there. Uh, lots of really amazing yeah. stuff also in there. There's like a little sign that's like what you need yeah, for a 30 yeah. day mission, so like there's much food. Yeah, right. They had a little uh, treadmill on there that reminded me of the guy that just ran, the guy just ran uh, the marathon, the Boston Marathon from the in space 
on a treadmill like with the same time that people were running the Boston Marathon and stuff. I thought that was really cool. Okay, so there's this gigantic asteroid wall back behind us. So they made like a replica of what they think the asteroid surface is gonna look like. And then they have these robots here. And so they can rig up the equipment and the, the, the testing equipment, Place. whatever you call them, instruments. <laughs> they instruments. They the instruments. And they'll sort of bring them along. You see these tracks here? So they'll bring them along these tracks and sort of manipulate it to, as if the spacecraft were coming into the asteroid wall. And then they can test and see like how well the LIDAR is measuring the distance and how well everything's sort of measuring and putting stuff together. And probably they go fast too, so I'm just imagining a robot. <laughs> so it's like a ridiculously detail-oriented test of what the world's going to be like. So it's really crazy how cool this is to put this together. This is the big finale of the thing, and it's definitely worthwhile of a finale. It's a big, like, a, you know, Hollywood foam <laughs> fake wall thing that they made. It's yeah. really, really impressive. I'll I got a bunch of pictures of it. I'll scatter some in here. And you can just imagine one of these gigantic things with, like, the Osiris Rex replica on it, or even the real Osiris Rex, like, moving down the tracks and sort of coming and making contact and doing a touch-and-go against this. It's pretty amazing. It's so cool. So, yeah, that was the event. It was really crazy, um, really cool, and I'm really glad that I got the opportunity to go over there and look at all the really, really cool um, science-y stuff and all the spaceship and the asteroid wall. It was all just so amazing. Yeah, the level of the level of what they do here is is amazing, yeah. like, just remarkable. And to watch this thing over the next, you know, 10 years mm -hmm. is going to be pretty cool, too, or eight yeah. years. Uh, eight years. We're definitely, I'm hooked. Like, I'm going to follow this thing. Like, we may, we're, we're, we're talking about maybe going to the launch at the end of the year. It launches in September, so we may go to Florida so we can watch the launch. I think that would be really cool. And then in 2023, when Presley's 18, <laughs> maybe we'll go, or 19, well, it depends on what month. We'll go to, uh, we maybe we'll go to Utah where it's going to come back. Yeah. And even though we probably can't be there when it comes back because of the military base and stuff, we can at least say we were there in the area. Yeah. Um, we'll go to the uh, the big lake in Doctor Who, where he got shot. Um, so, uh, unbelievable, like yes. great day. Like this is a day that will stay with Presley forever. Mm -hmm. Like she will never forget what happened today and what she got to see, and she'll be reminded of it in you know eight years when the thing comes back too, right? But uh, thank you so much to the NASA social group. Yes, um, I know Presley. It's eighteen was the age limit, and we got a very nice compliment. Mm -hmm. yeah. They said. Yes. Uh, we were talking about it as a group, and they're like, are we really gonna waste a seat on a 10-year-old? Mm -hmm. um, and then Presley asked like her first question in the first session today <laughs> about like Newton's law and inertial movement and how the spacecraft is working in comparison to New Horizons and stuff, and they were all just blown away like people and usually like, are. We did not waste And they're like, yeah, seat. that wasn't a wasted seat. I'm so glad that they said yes. They're glad they said yes. We had a good time. Hopefully yeah. we made some new friends, mm -hmm. and uh, this won't be our last NASA social because yeah. this was really awesome. Yeah, this was super cool. Cool. Although it sounds weird, just like every year we go to like a NASA event. Yeah, I know. That's kind of crazy. That's yeah, so it's, a, it's a strange, it's a strange life we lead. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Yeah, but it was super cool. Cool. You want to sign us off? So yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, guys. And we'll tell you when the video is posting on the other channel, so you can go check it out over there too. Yeah. There'll be more detail over there. That should be soon. And a better camera. Yes. <laughs>